Hello everyone! Today the bookworms are going to be reading George's Marvelous Medicine by Roald Dahl, illustrated by Quentin Blake. Let's get into the book. The Brown Hen George stood in the farmyard looking up at the roof. The old farmhouse had a fine roof of pale red tiles and tall chimneys. There was no sign of Grandma. There was only a song thrush sitting on one of the chimney pots singing a song. The old wurzels got stuck in the attic, George thought. Thank goodness for that. Suddenly a tile came clattering down from the roof and fell into the yard. The song thrush took off fast and flew away. Then another tile came down, then half a dozen more, and then, very slowly, like some weird monster rising up from the deep, Grandma's head came through the roof, then her scrawny neck, and the top of her shoulders. How am I doing, boy? she shouted. How's that for a bash-up? Don't you think you'd better stop now, Grandma? George called out. I have stopped, she answered. I feel terrific. Didn't I tell you I had magic powers? Didn't I warn you I had wizardry on the tip of my fingers? But you wouldn't listen to me, would you? You wouldn't listen to your old Grandma. You didn't do it, Grandma, George shouted back to her. I did it. I made you a new medicine. A new medicine? You? What rubbish, she yelled. I did, I did, George shouted. You're lying as usual, Grandma yelled. You're always lying. I'm not lying, Grandma. I swear I'm not. The wrinkled old face high up on the roof stared down suspiciously at George. Are you telling me you actually made a new medicine all by yourself, she shouted. Yes, Grandma, all by myself. I don't believe you, she answered, but I'm very comfortable up here. Fetch me a cup of tea. A brown hen was pecking about in the yard close to where George was standing. The hen gave him an idea. Quickly, he uncorked the medicine bottle and poured some of the brown stuff into the spoon. Watch this, Grandma, he shouted. He crouched down, holding out the spoon to the hen. Chicken, he said. Chick, chick, chicken, come here. Have some of this. Chickens are stupid birds and very greedy. They think everything is food. This one thought the spoon was full of corn. It hopped over. It put its head on one side and looked at the spoon. Come on, chicken, George said. Good chicken. Chick, chick, chick. The brown hen stretched out its neck towards the spoon and went, peck. It got a beak full of medicine. The effect was electric. Owie! shrieked the hen, and it shot straight up into the air like a rocket. It went as high as the house. Then, down it came again into the yard, splosh, and there it sat with its feathers all sticking straight out from its body. There was a look of amazement on its silly face. George stood watching it. Grandma up on the roof was watching it too. The hen got to its feet. It was rather shaky. It was making funny gurgling noises in its throat. Its beak was opening and shutting. It seemed like a pretty sick hen. You've done it in, you stupid boy, Grandma shouted. That hen's going to die. Your father will be after you now. He'll give you socks and serve you right. All of a sudden, black smoke started pouring out of the hen's beak. It's on fire, Grandma yelled. The hen's on fire. George ran to the water trough to get a bucket of water. That hen will be roasted and ready for eating any moment, Grandma shouted. George sloshed the bucket of water over the hen. There was a sizzling sound and the smoke went away. Old hen's laid its last egg, Grandma shouted. Hens don't do any laying after they've been on fire. Now that the fire was out, the hen seemed better. It stood up properly. It flapped its wings. Then it crouched down low to the ground as though getting ready to jump. It did jump. It jumped high in the air and turned a complete somersault then landed back on his feet. It's a circus hen, Grandma shouted from the rooftop. It's a flipping acrobat. Now the hen began to grow. George had been waiting for this to happen. It's growing, he yelled. It's growing, Grandma. Look, it's growing. Bigger and bigger, taller and taller it grew. Soon the hen was four or five times its normal size. Can you see it, Grandma? George shouted. I can see it, boy, the old girl shouted back. I'm watching it. George was hopping about from one foot to the other with excitement, pointing at the enormous hen and shouting, It's had the magic medicine, Grandma, and it's growing just like you did. 
but there was a difference between the way the hen was growing and the way Grandma grew. When Grandma grew taller, she got thinner and thinner. The hen didn't. It stayed nice and plump all along. Soon it was taller than George, but it didn't stop there. It went right on growing until it was about as big as a horse. Then it stopped. Doesn't it look marvelous, Grandma? George shouted. It's not as tall as me, Grandma sang out. Compared with me, that hen is titchy small. I'm the tallest of them all. The pig, the bullocks, the sheep, the pony, and the nanny goat. At that moment, George's mother came back from shopping in the village. She drove her car into the yard and got out. She was carrying a bottle of milk in one hand and a bag of groceries in the other. The first thing she saw was the gigantic brown hen towering over little George. She dropped the bottle of milk. Then, Grandma started shouting at her from the rooftop. And when she looked up and saw Grandma's head sticking up through the tiles, she dropped the bag of groceries. How about that then, eh, Mary? Grandma shouted. I'll bet you've never seen a hen as big as that. That's George's giant hen, that is. But, 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 stammered George's mother. It's George's magic medicine, Grandma shouted. We've both of us had it, the hen and I. But how in the world did you get on the roof, cried the mother. I didn't, cackled the old woman. My feet are still standing on the floor in the living room. This was too much for George's mother to understand. She just goggled and gapped. She looked as though she were going to faint. A second later, George's father appeared. His name was Mr. Killy Cranky. Mr. Cranky was a small man with bandy legs and a huge head. He was a kind father to George, but he was not an easy person to live with because even the smallest things got him all worked up and excited. The hen standing in the yard was certainly not a small thing. And when Mr. Cranky saw it started jumping about as though something was burning his feet, Great heavens, he cried, waving his arms. What's this? What's happened? Where did it come from? It's a giant hen. Who did it? I did, George said. Look at me, Grandma shouted from the rooftop. Never mind about the hen. What about me? Mr. Cranky looked up and saw Grandma. Shut up, Grandma, he said. It didn't seem to surprise him that the old girl was sticking up through the roof. It was the hen that excited him. He had never seen anything like it. But then, who had? It's fantastic, Mr. Cranky shouted, dancing round and round. It's colossal. It's gigantic. It's tremendous. It's a miracle. How did you do it, George? George started telling his father about the magic medicine. While he was doing this, the big brown hen sat down in the middle of the yard and went cluck, duck, cluck, 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 cluck. Everyone stared at it. When it stood up again, there was a brown egg laying there. The egg was the size of a football. The egg would make scrambled eggs for 20 people, Mrs. Cranky said. George, Mr. Cranky shouted, how much of this medicine have you got? Lots, George said. There's a big saucepan full in the kitchen, and this bottle here is nearly full. Come with me, Mr. Cranky yelled, grabbing George by the arm. Bring the medicine. For years and years, I've been trying to breed bigger and bigger animals. Bigger bulls for beef, bigger pigs for pork, bigger sheep for mutton. They went to the pigsty first. George gave a spoonful of medicine to the pig. The pig blew smoke from its nose and jumped about all over the place. Then it grew and grew. In the end, it looked like this. They went to the herd of fine black bullocks that Mr. Cranky was trying to fatten for the market. George gave each of them some medicine, and this is what happened. Then the sheep. He gave some to his gray pony, Jack Frost. And finally, just for fun, he gave some to Alma, the nanny goat. A crane for Grandma. Grandma from high up on the rooftop could see everything that was going on and she didn't like what she saw. She wanted to be the center of attention and nobody was taking the slightest notice of her. George and Mr. Cranky were running around getting excited about the enormous animals. Mrs. Cranky was washing up in the kitchen 
and Grandma was all alone on the rooftop. Hey, you! she yelled. George, give me a cup of tea this minute, you idle little beast! Don't listen to the old goat, Mr. Cranky said. She's stuck where she is, and a good thing, too. But we can't leave her up there, Dad, George said. What if it rains? George! Grandma yelled. Oh, you horrible little boy! You disgusting little worm! Fetch me a cup of tea at once and a slice of currant cake. We'll have to get her out, Dad, George said. She won't give us any peace if we don't. Mrs. Cranky came outside and she agreed with George. She's my own mother, she said. She's a pain in the neck, Mr. Cranky said. I don't care, Mrs. Cranky said. I'm not leaving my own mother sticking up through the roof for the rest of her life. So in the end, Mr. Cranky telephoned the crane company and asked them to send their biggest crane out to the house at once. The crane arrived one hour later. It was on wheels and there were two men inside it. The crane men climbed up onto the roof and put ropes under Grandma's arms. Then she was lifted right up through the roof. In a way, the medicine had done Grandma good. It had not made her any less grumpy or bad-tempered, but it seemed to have cured all her aches and pains, and she was suddenly as frisky as a ferret. As soon as the crane had lowered her to the ground, she ran over to George's huge pony, Jack Frost, and jumped onto his back. This ancient old hag, who was now as tall as the house, then galloped about the farm on the gigantic pony, jumping over trees and sheds and shouting, Out of my way! Clear the decks! Stand back, all you miserable midgets, or I'll trample you to death! and other silly things like that. But because Grandma was now much too tall to get back into the house, she had to sleep that night in the hay barn with the mice and the rats. Mr. Cranky's Great Idea The next day, George's father came down to breakfast in a state of greater excitement than ever. I've been awake all night thinking about it, he cried. About what, Dad? George asked him. About your marvelous medicine, of course. We can't stop now, my boy. We must start making more of it at once. More and more and more. The giant saucepan had been completely emptied the day before because there had been so many sheep and pigs and cows and bullocks to be dosed. But why do we need more, Dad? George asked. We've done all of our own animals and we've made Grandma feel as frisky as a fairy even though she does have to sleep in the barn. My dear boy, cried Mr. Killy Cranky. We need barrels and barrels of it. Tons and tons. Then we will sell it to every farmer in the world so that all of them can have giant animals. We will build a marvelous medicine factory and sell the stuff in bottles at five pounds a time. We will become rich and you will become famous. But wait a minute, Dad, George said. There's no waiting, cried Mr. Cranky, working himself up so much that he put butter in his coffee and milk on his toast. Don't you understand how, what this tremendous invention of yours is going to do to the world? Nobody will ever go hungry again. Why won't they, asked George. Because one giant cow will give 50 buckets of milk a day, cried Mr. Cranky, waving his arms. One giant chicken will make a hundred fried chicken dinners, and one giant pig will give you a thousand pork chops. It's tremendous, my dear boy. It's fantastic. It'll change the world. But wait a minute, Dad. George said again. Don't keep saying wait a minute, shouted Mr. Cranky. There isn't a minute to wait. We must get cracking at once. Do calm down, my dear, Mrs. Cranky said from the other end of the table. And stop putting marmalade on your cornflakes. So heck with my cornflakes, cried Mr. Cranky, leaping up from his chair. Come on, George, let's get going. And the first thing we'll do is to make one more saucepan full as a tester. But Dad, said little George, the trouble is... There won't be any trouble, my boy, cried Mr. Cranky. How could there possibly be any trouble? All you've got to do is put the same stuff into the saucepan as you did yesterday. And while you're doing it, I'll write down each and every item. That's how we get the magic recipe. But Dad, George said, please listen to me. Why don't you listen to him, Mrs. Cranky said. The boy's trying to tell you something. But Mr. Cranky was too excited to listen to anyone except himself. And then, he cried, when the new mixture is ready, we'll test it out on an old hen just to make absolutely sure we've got it right. And after that, we'll all shout hooray and build the giant factory. But Dad, come on then, what is it you want to say? 
I can't possibly remember all the hundreds of things I put into the saucepan to make the medicine, George said. Of course you can, my dear boy, cried Mr. Cranky. I'll help you. I'll jog your memory. You'll get it in the end. You see if you don't. Now then, what was the very first thing you put in? I went up to the bathroom first, George said. I used a lot of things from the bathroom and on Mommy's dressing table. Come on then, cried Mr. Killy Cranky. Up we go to the bathroom. When they got there, they found, of course, a whole lot of empty tubes and empty aerosols and empty bottles. That's great, said Mr. Cranky. That tells us exactly what you used. If anything is empty, it means you used it. So Mr. Cranky started making a list of everything that was empty in the bathroom. Then they went to Mrs. Cranky's dressing table. A box of powder, said Mr. Cranky, writing it down. Helga's hair said. Flowers of turnips perfume. Terrific! This is going to be easy. Where did you go next? To the laundry room, George said. But are you sure you haven't missed out anything out up here, Dad? That's up to you, my boy, Mr. Cranky said. Have I? I don't think so, George said. So down they went to the laundry room, and once again Mr. Cranky wrote down the names of all the empty bottles and cans. My goodness me, what a mass of stuff you use, he cried. No wonder it didn't magic things. Is that the lot? No, Dad, it's not, George said. And he led his father out to the shed where the animal medicines were kept and showed him the five big empty bottles up on the shelf. Mr. Cranky wrote down all their names. Anything else, Mr. Cranky asked? Little George scratched his head and thought and thought, but he couldn't remember having put anything else in. Mr. Killy Cranky leaped into his car and drove down to the village and bought new bottles and tubes and cans of everything on his list. He then went to the vet and got a fresh supply of all the animal medicines George had used. Now show me how you did it, George, he said. Come along. Show me exactly how you mix them all together. Marvelous Medicine Number 2 They were in the kitchen now and the big saucepan was on the stove. All the things Mr. Cranky had bought were lined up near the sink. Come along, my boy, cried Mr. Killy Cranky. Which one did you put in first? This one, George said. Golden Gloss Hair Shampoo. He emptied the bottle into the pan. Now the toothpaste, George went on. And the shaving soap, and the face cream, and the nail varnish. Keep at it, my boy, cried Mr. Cranky, dancing round in the kitchen. Keep putting them in. Don't stop. Don't pause. Don't hesitate. It's a pleasure, my dear fellow, to watch you work. One by one, George poured and squeezed the things into the saucepan. With everything so close at hand, the whole job didn't take him more than ten minutes. But when it was all done, the saucepan didn't somehow seem to be quite as full as it had been the first time. Now, what did you do? cried Mr. Cranky. Did you stir it? I boiled it, George said, but not for long, and I stirred it as well. So Mr. Cranky lit the gas under the saucepan, and George stirred the mixture with the same long wooden spoon he had used before. It's not brown enough, George said. Wait a minute, I know what I've forgotten. What, cried Mr. Cranky. Tell me quick, but if we've forgotten even one tiny thing, then it won't work, at least not in the same way. A quart of brown gloss paint, George said. That's what I've forgotten. Mr. Killy Cranky shot out out of the house and into his car like a rocket. He sped down to the village and bought the paint and rushed back again. He opened the can in the kitchen and handed it to George. George poured the paint into the saucepan. Aha! That's better, George said. That's more like the right color. It's boiling, cried Mr. Cranky. It's boiling and bubbling, George. Is it ready yet? It's ready, George said. At least I hope it is. Right, shouted Mr. Cranky, hopping about. Let's test it. Let's give some to a chicken. My heavens alive! Why don't you calm down a bit, Mrs. Cranky said, coming down into the kitchen. Calm down? cried Mr. Cranky. You expect me to calm down, and here we are mixing up the greatest medicine ever discovered in the history of the world? Come along, George. Dip a cup full out of the saucepan and get a spoon, and we'll give some to a chicken just to make absolutely certain we've got the correct mixture. Outside in the yard, there were several chickens that hadn't had any of George's marvelous medicine, number one. They were pecking about in the dirt in that silly way chickens do. George crouched down, holding out a spoonful of marvelous medicine, number two. Come on, chicken, he said. 
Good chicken. Chick, chick, chick. A white chicken with black specks on its feathers looked up at George. It walked over to the spoon and went peck. The effect that medicine number two had on this chicken was not quite the same as the effect produced by medicine number one, but it was very interesting. Whoosh! shrieked the chicken, and it shot six feet up in the air and came down again. Then sparks came flying out of its beak, bright yellow sparks of fire, as though someone was sharpening a knife on its grindstone inside its tummy. Then its leg began to grow longer. Its body stayed the same size, but the two thin yellow legs got longer and longer and longer, and longer still. What's happening to it? cried Mr. Killy Cranky. Something's wrong, George said. The legs went on growing, and the more they grew, the higher up into the air went the chicken's body. When the legs were about 15 feet long, they stopped growing. The chicken looked perfectly absurd with its long legs and its ordinary little body perched high up on top. It was like a chicken on stilts. Oh, my sainted aunts, cried Mr. Kelly Cranky. We've got it wrong. This chicken's no good to anybody. It's all legs. No one wants chicken's legs. I must have left something out, George said. I know you left something out, cried Mr. Cranky. Think, boy, think. What is it you left out? I've got it, said George. What was it? Quick. Flea powder for dogs, George said. You mean you put the flea powder in the first one? Yes, Dad, I did. A whole carton of it. Then that's the answer. Wait a minute, said George. Did we have brown shoe polish on our list? We did not, said Mr. Cranky. I used that too, said George. Well, no wonder it went wrong, said Mr. Cranky. He was already running to his car, and soon he was heading down to the village to buy more flea powder and more shoe polish. Marvelous Medicine Number Three. Here it is, cried Mr. Kelly Cranky, rushing into the kitchen. One carton of flea powder for dogs and one tin of brown shoe polish. George poured the flea powder into the giant saucepan. Then he scooped the shoe polish out of its tin and added that as well. Stir it up, George! Shouted Mr. Cranky. Give it another boil. We've got it this time. I'll bet we've got it. After marvelous medicine number three that had been boiled and stirred, George took a cup full of it into the yard to try it on another chicken. Mr. Cranky ran after him, flapping his arms and hopping with excitement. Come and watch this one! He called out to Mrs. Cranky. Come and watch us turning an ordinary chicken into a lovely great big one that lays eggs as large as footballs. I hope you do better than last time," said Mrs. Cranky, following them out. "Come on, chicken," said George, holding out a spoonful of medicine number three. "Good chicken, chick, 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 chick. Have some of this lovely medicine." A magnificent black cockerel with a scarlet comb came stepping over. The cockerel looked at the spoon, and in it went peck. "Cock a doodle do!" squawked the cockerel, shooting up into the air and coming down again. Watch him now! cried Mr. Cranky. Watch him grow! Any moment he's going to start getting bigger and bigger. Mr. Killy Cranky, Mrs. Cranky, and Little George stood in the yard, staring at the black cockerel. The cockerel stood quite still. It looked as though it had a headache. What's happening to its neck? Mrs. Cranky said. It's getting longer, George said. I'll say it's getting longer, Mrs. Cranky said. Mr. Cranky, for once, said nothing. Last time it was the legs, Mrs. Cranky said. Now it's the neck. Who wants a chicken with a long neck? You can't eat a chicken's neck. It was an extraordinary sight. The cockerel's body hadn't grown at all, but the neck was now about six feet long. All right, George, Mr. Cranky said. What else have you forgotten? I don't know, George said. Oh yes, you do, Mr. Cranky said. Come along, boy. Think. There's probably just one vital thing missing, and you've got to remember it. I put in some engine oil from the garage. George said, "Did you have that on your list?" Eureka! cried Mr. Cranky. That's the answer. How much did you put in? Half a pint. George said. Mr. Cranky ran to the garage and found another half pint of oil. And some antifreeze. George called after him. I sloshed in a bit of antifreeze. Marvelous medicine number four. Back in the kitchen once again, George, with Mr. Cranky watching him anxiously, tipped half a pint of engine oil and some antifreeze into the giant saucepan. 
Boil it up again, cried Mr. Cranky. Boil it and stir it. George boiled it and stirred it. You'll never get it right, said Mrs. Cranky. Don't forget, you don't just have to have the same things, but you've got to have exactly the same amounts of those things. And how can you possibly do that? You keep out of this, cried Mr. Cranky. We are doing fine. We've got it this time. We've got it this time. You see if we haven't. This was George's marvelous medicine number four. And when it had boiled for a couple of minutes, George once again carried a cup full of it out into the yard. Mr. Cranky ran after him. Mrs. Cranky followed more slowly. You're going to have some mighty queer chickens around here if you go on like this, she said. Dish it out, George, cried Mr. Cranky. Give a spoonful to that one over there. He pointed to a brown hen. George knelt down and held out the spoon with the new medicine in it. Chick, chick, he said, try some of this. The brown hen walked over and looked at the spoon. Then it went, peck. Ouch, it said. Then a funny whistling noise came out of its beak. Watch it grow, shouted Mr. Cranky. Don't be too sure, said Mrs. Cranky. Why is it whistling like that? Keep quiet, woman, cried Mr. Cranky. Give it a chance. They stood there staring at the brown hen. It's getting smaller, George said. Look at it, Dad, it's shrinking. And indeed it was. In less than a minute, the hen had shrunk so much it was no bigger than a new hatched chick. It looked ridiculous. Goodbye, Grandma. There's still something you've left out, Mr. Cranky said. I can't think what it could be, George said. Give it up, Mrs. Cranky said. Pack it in. You'll never get it right. Mr. Cranky looked very forlorn. George looked pretty fed up, too. He was still kneeling on the ground with the spoon in one hand and the cup full of medicine in the other. The ridiculous tiny brown hen was walking slowly away. At that point, Grandma came striding into the yard. From her enormous height, she glared down at the three people below her and she shouted, What's going around here? Why hasn't anyone brought me my morning cup of tea? It's bad enough having to sleep in the yard with the rats and mice, but I'll be blown if I'm going to starve as well. No tea, no eggs and bacon, no butter toast. I'm sorry, Mother, Mrs. Cranky said. We've been terribly busy. I'll get you something right away. Let George get it, the lazy little brute, Grandma shouted. Just then, the old woman spotted the cup in George's hand. She bent down and peered into it. She saw that it was full of brown liquid. It looked very much like tea. Ho, ho, she cried. Ha, ha. So that's your little game, is it? You look after yourself, all right, don't you? You make quite sure you've got a nice cup of morning tea. But you didn't think to bring one to your poor old grandma. I always knew that you were a selfish pig. No, grandma, George said. This isn't... Don't lie to me, boy, the enormous old hag shouted. Pass it up here this minute. No, cried Mrs. Cranky. No, mother, don't. That's not for you. Now you're against me, too, shouted grandma. My own daughter trying to stop me from having breakfast. Trying to starve me out. Mr. Cranky looked up at the horrid old woman and he smiled sweetly. Of course it's for you, Grandma, he said. You take it and drink it while it's nice and hot. Don't think I won't, Grandma said, bending down from her great height and reaching out a huge horny hand for the cup. Hand it over, George. No, no, Grandma, George cried out, pulling the cup away. You mustn't. You're not to have it. Give it to me, boy, yelled Grandma. Don't, cried Mrs. Cranky. That's George's marvelous. Everything's George's around here, shouted Grandma. George is this, George is that. I'm fed up with it. She snatched the cup out of little George's hands and carried it high up out of reach. Drink it up, Grandma, Mr. Cranky said, grinning hugely. Lovely tea. No, the other two cried. No, no, no. But it was too late. The ancient bean pole had already put the cup to her lips, and in one gulp she swallowed everything that was in it. Mother, wailed Mrs. Cranky. You've just drunk 50 doses of George's marvelous medicine number four. And look what one tiny spoonful did to that little brown old hen. But Grandma didn't even hear her. Great clouds of steam were already pouring out of her mouth, and she was beginning to whistle. This is going to be interesting, Mr. Cranky said, still grinning. Now you've done it, cried Mrs. Cranky, glaring at her husband. 
You've cut the old girl's goose. I didn't do anything, Mr. Cranky said. Oh, yes, you did. You told her to drink it. A tremendous hissing sound was coming from above their heads. Steam was shooting out of Grandma's mouth and nose and ears and whistling as it came. She'll feel better after she's let off a bit of steam, Mr. Cranky said. She's going to blow up, Mrs. Cranky wailed. Her boiler is going to burst. Stand clear, Mr. Cranky said. George was quite alarmed. He stood up and ran back a few paces. The jets of white steam kept squirting out of the skinny old hag's head, and the whistling was so high and shrill it hurt the ears. Call the fire brigade, cried Mrs. Cranky. Call the police! Man, the hose pipes! Too late, said Mr. Cranky, looking pleased. Grandma, shrieked Mrs. Cranky. Mother, run to the drinking trough and put your head under the water. But even as she spoke, the whistling suddenly stopped and the steam disappeared. That was when Grandma began to get smaller. She had started off with her head as high as the roof of the house, but now she was coming down fast. Watch this, George, Mr. Cranky shouted, hopping around the yard and flapping his arms. Watch what happens when someone's had 50 spoonfuls instead of one. Very soon, Grandma was back to normal height. Stop, cried Mrs. Cranky. That's just right. But she didn't stop. Smaller and smaller she got. Down and down she went. In another half minute, she was no bigger than a bottle of lemonade. How'd you feel, Mother? asked Mrs. Cranky anxiously. Grandma's tiny face still bore the same foul and furious expression it had always had. Her eyes, no bigger now than little keyholes, were blazing with anger. How do I feel, she yelled. How'd you think I feel? How would you feel if you'd been a glorious giant a minute ago and suddenly you're a miserable midget? She's still going, shouted Mr. Cranky gleefully. She's still getting smaller. And by golly, she was. When she was no bigger than a cigarette, Mrs. Cranky made a grab for her. She held her in her hands and she cried. How do I stop her getting smaller still? You can't, said Mr. Cranky. She's at 50 times the right amount. I must stop her, Mrs. Cranky wailed. I can hardly see her as it is. Catch hold of each end and pull, Mr. Cranky said. By then, Grandma was the size of a matchstick and still shrinking fast. A moment later, she was no bigger than a pin, then a pumpkin seed, then, then... Where is she? cried Mrs. Cranky. I've lost her. Hooray, said Mr. Cranky. She's gone. She's disappeared completely, cried Mrs. Cranky. That's what happens to you if you're grumpy and bad-tempered, said Mr. Cranky. Great medicine of yours, George. George didn't know what to think. For a few minutes, Mrs. Cranky kept wandering round with a puzzled look on her face, saying, Mother, where are you? Where have you gone? Where have you got to? How can I find you? But she calmed down quite quickly, and by lunchtime she was saying, Ah, uh, well, I suppose it's all for the best, really. She was a bit of a nuisance around the house, wasn't she? Yes, Mr. Cranky said. She most certainly was. George didn't say a word. He felt quite trembly. He knew something tremendous had taken place that morning. For a few brief moments, he had touched with the very tips of his fingers the edge of a magic world. The end. That's it for today, everyone. I hope you guys enjoy. For more read-alongs like these, don't forget to subscribe. If you enjoyed the book, give it a big thumbs up and share with a friend. Don't forget to join us every day for a new video with a fun read-along. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!